I'm just going to give you some very simple teaching today on healing, and then we're going to have a healing time, and we'll see what Jesus does, okay? So, how are we doing on time? We'll make it really short and sweet today, because I want to get into healing time. Um, Jesus intended healing to actually be something for everyone, and he intended it to be a lifestyle where it happens wherever we go. Most people, when they think about healing in the church, they think, uh, most Christians, they think healing is something that happens at church. Uh, you know, at the end of the service, maybe um, some guest speaker or some pastor or some ministry leaders, they'll pray for the people, and then maybe something might happen. But actually, Jesus intended healing to be something for everyone. That was his desire from the very beginning. So Jesus had a healing ministry, right? Jesus healed people. Are you guys alive? Yes, he healed people. All right. And then he sent out the 12 disciples to do the exact same thing. Okay? So in Luke chapter 9, if you have your Bible, you can turn there. Luke 9, 1 and 2. It says, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So what does Jesus tell them to do? He actually tells them, go and heal the sick wherever you go. He doesn't just say, go find sick people, invite them to church, and then when the right person prays for them at the end of the service, then maybe something might happen. He actually tells them, go and heal the sick wherever you go. Right? So that means that if you're at Gaga Ball and somebody gets hurt, you can go over and pray for them. Right? If you're wherever you go, you can see Jesus touch people. Amen? When you look at the healings that happen in the Bible, most of them are not happening inside of church. Most of them are happening as people are walking down the street or wherever they're going. Jesus would walk down the street. Some leper would call out, Master, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, wait a second. I can't pray for you now. We need to have a band play for at least three songs. I'll preach for at least a half hour. Then I can pray for you and maybe something can happen. Is that what Jesus did? No. No, he just prayed for them right then and there. Amen? And we can do the exact same thing. Amen? All right. So, Jesus multiplied healing ministry to the 12 disciples. Now, sometimes people think, oh, I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not holy enough to see God do something like that. Well, who is Jesus sending out to have a healing ministry? Who are the 12 disciples? These people are not perfect. You have Judas. Please don't try to convince me how Judas had perfect character. Right? You have Peter. This is Peter who's about ready to deny Jesus even to a small child, right? Yeah. You have Thomas, Doubting Thomas. How many of you want the man whose nickname is Doubting in charge of the healing ministry? You have James and John. When James and John were going to go do evangelism, they were going to become serial killers. <laughs> when the village didn't repent quick enough, they want fire to come from heaven to kill everybody in the village. And then Jesus had to rebuke them and say, no, 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 that's not what we do. These people were not perfect. Amen? They were empowered not because they were so perfect, but because Jesus had empowered them. Amen? All right. So, in Luke chapter 10, we see Jesus is after empowering more people. He didn't just say, oh, these people, they weren't perfect, they messed it up. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to empower anybody to have a healing ministry. No. He actually sent more people out. Luke chapter 10. It says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. And then in verse 9, Jesus tells the 72 to heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. So again, Jesus is telling them, go have a healing ministry wherever you go. Amen? All right. Jesus sent them out a third time. Almost makes you think this was pretty important to Jesus if he did it three times in a row, right? Jesus sent them out a third time in what we call the Great Commission. How many of you have heard of the Great Commission before? Okay, not very many hands. Oh, more hands. Okay. 
The Great Commission is found in three places in the Bible that I'm aware of. It's found at the very end of Matthew, the very end of Mark, and Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Okay? In two out of those three places, Jesus again is talking about power. He says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And then it also says at the end of Mark 16 that these signs will follow them that believe that they lay hands on the sick and they recover. So, the Great Commission is a Great Commission of power. Now, is the Great Commission just for 2,000 years ago or is it also for today? Anybody know? Today, exactly. Was it just for pastors, evangelists, and guest speakers or is it for everyone? everyone? Very good. So if the Great Commission is for everyone and for today, then the power that goes with it is also for everyone and for today. You don't have to do anything to have a healing ministry. Jesus has already done something for you to have a healing ministry. But sometimes people are working really, really hard for something they already have. So let me, let me explain like this. I travel all over the world. In every country I've been in, I found an animal. I think you've seen it before. It's called a dog. How many of you know what a dog is? I'm going to ask some very simple questions that even like a four-year-old could probably get right. All right? So, does a dog have a tail? Yes. So far, so good. First question, correct. But, have you ever seen a dog chase its tail? Yes. Exactly. Second question, correct. You're, going to get, you're all going to get an A plus here. All right, third question. But does the dog actually own the tail? Does he have it already? But he doesn't think so, right? Yeah. He's working for it even though he already has it, right? Yeah. Instead of believing the truth that the tail is already his, he's working really, really hard in order to try to get what he already has. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's the exact same when instead of believing that Jesus has empowered us to go and do this, we are working really, really hard for what he has already given us. He has already given us the opportunity to see the sick healed when we pray. We don't have to work for what he has already given us. Amen? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. You guys tracking? So, Jesus has qualified you to see sick people get healed when you pray. He did it when he gave you the Great Commission. So, if Jesus himself has qualified all of us, then we should not disqualify ourselves when Jesus has qualified us. That's what I would always do. Somebody is sick and needs a healing, and I would think to myself, oh, I don't know if I've read my Bible enough today. I don't think anything is going to happen. Oh, I don't think I've prayed enough today. I don't think anything is going to happen. Oh, I said something bad yesterday. I don't think anything is going to happen. I don't think I have enough faith. I don't think anything is going to happen. And before I've ever even prayed for the person, I've already disqualified myself. Has anybody here ever done this before? I'm thinking the people that are over the age of 15, probably most of them have, and some of the younger ones as well. I would disqualify myself. And so now when I'm praying for them, I'm not expecting God to do anything. I'm just only praying to be nice because they asked. But I'm really not expecting God will actually do something. That's a real bummer. If you came to me today and you said, Paul, I got hurt really bad. I need prayer. Can you pray for me? You don't want me to think of reasons why nothing will happen because I'm not perfect, right? You want me to think that God can still heal you even though I'm not a perfect person. Amen? Hello? All right, I'm no different than you. We're all just normal people with a great big Jesus. All right? So when you pray for someone, they don't want you to think of reasons why nothing is going to happen because you are not perfect. Amen? They want you to believe and put your, your faith in God's grace and not in your works. 